I want to thank you for tuning into our broadcast today. We've got another great service in store for you. Each week, we are seeing new people being drawn into the presence of God. Now, when I came to faith in Christ, there were three things that caused me to follow him. First of all, I felt his presence real strong. Secondly, I saw his power at work. And finally, I heard the truth of God's word. For the past 26 years, we've been committed to seeing lives transformed through these same three principles. We need your help to bring this life-changing experience to a generation that so desperately needs a foundation of faith. Now, if our ministry has been a blessing to you, please let us know. You can contact us or partner with us through our website at libertychurchmi.com. Take a minute and check it out. Now, here's today's message. I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to um, be doing week two uh, of the greatest of these, and I'm excited to do that. Um, this is um, just an awesome opportunity um, because oftentimes we don't uh, remember and we don't think about the small things. Uh, how many of you, sometimes you can go through life and you can forget the small things? And, and so the greatest of these we'll get to talk about today. But before we do that, can I pray for us? Amen. Father, we thank you for this service. We thank you for these people. We thank you for those watching us live around the world. God, have your way in this service. Use these lips to speak life. Use this moment to regenerate faith. Use this time of love and compassion. God, I thank you for this moment. That something today will be done and said that would help transform their week. We believe that it is so. Kingdom of God come and your will be done. Amen. Amen. As we prepare for this season, we're going to go into our foundational scripture this morning. Our foundational scripture this morning um, will be found in Matthew 23. Matthew 23. The Bible says, But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. Then one to them, and a lawyer asked him a question, testing him, saying, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus answered him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. In my introduction this morning, what is the first commandment of all? In Matthew Matthew 22, we see what the first commandment is, Jesus is saying, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. This is the first commandment, but it's not listed in the Ten Commandments. Pastor, why is it not listed in the Ten Commandments? Well, it's not listed in the Ten Commandments because that was talking, the Ten Commandments was talking about law. Say law. But when Jesus came, Jesus came to fulfill the law, and now we walk in love. Say, I walk in love. So because we walk in love, there's an expectation for believers that everyone else does not have. Uh, I I was in the car a few days ago. Uh, I was on Metro Parkway. And if you've ever been on Metro Parkway, you're literally on the freeway. Jesus Christ, you're, you're on the freeway. If you've ever driven on Metro Parkway, you're on the freeway. And so I guess I was driving, those watching me online, I guess I was going too slow. Maybe I, I was driving too slow. And this big pickup truck behind me, he, 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 he got on the side of me, and, and he gave me a finger, and it wasn't the peace sign. <laughs> and, and, uh, 2005, Julian wanted to rise up in me. Before I was a pastor, oh, Jesus, oh, before I knew my scriptures, before I had a a prayer language, 
before I knew what fasting was. It almost came up in me. But I decided to keep going my pace, and I chose to ignore what was on the side of me. Sometimes when you love, you have to ignore So that you don't fall victimized to the world that we live in. Sometimes when you love people of God, you have to ignore. What do I mean you have to ignore? I could have responded. But would my response echoed the love of Christ? Or would have my response echoed something else? I, I want to encourage us, people of God, to always remember to echo love. That I have to echo love. I, I, I remember a, a few years ago, I was saying, I said, how can people, why, why, why do people, why are people so mean? Why are people so angry? Why are people so upset? Why are people so uh, 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 wanting to always revert to violence first uh, before love and, and, and compassion and a conversation? And, and I got the revelation, people cannot give what people do not have. People cannot, you, you, uh, why can't everyone love everybody? Why can't everybody just be like me? Guess what? If they do not have the key ingredient called Jesus Christ, they cannot give what you give. You can't expect them to give what you have because they don't have what you have. That's why you and I are commercials in the earth. That's why you and I are the representation of Jesus in the earth. That's why they must see you in order to see Jesus because if they don't see you acting right, if they don't see you loving right, if they don't see you giving right, if they don't see you with compassion in your heart, how can you expect them to give what they do not have. It's impossible. I, always, I don't know why this song always comes up in my head when I preach. Impossible. That's from Cinderella, if you guys didn't know. How, how can they give what they don't have? Love defined. See it in your outline. We first must need to know how God defines love. The Hebrew word is ahab, to have affection for, desire, delight in, or to be fond of. The Greek word is agapo, to have a preference for or to wish well, to regard the welfare of, to take pleasure in, to prize above all things, to be unwilling to abandon. Ah, that, when, when I saw that in the definition, when, when I saw that, when I, when I saw that, I, 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 I'm, trying to, I'm trying to behave myself because PT's not here, but, but, but when I saw that in the scripture, the, the ability to not leave me alone. Uh, when, when I feel, I feel the spirit of God. When I feel upset, when I feel alone, when I feel isolated, the Bible says that he loves you and I so much that he will never leave us, us nor forsake us, that he'll never abandon you in your home. You're never alone in the hospital. You're never alone. You have Christ in you. I just need everybody in the room real quick to say Christ in me. There's a power that lives on the inside of you, and his name is Jesus, the Son of God, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. I'm trying not to preach, but I need you to understand what God is trying to do. He needs you to walk in love. I want money, I want a big house, I want all these things, and I see all these things, but, 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 but when do we ask God, create in me a clean heart? <laughs> renewing me around. When, when do we ask God, I, I need to be changed on the inside out. I, I don't want to just look good on the outside and be nasty on the inside. I want God's power and his presence and his anointing and his ability and his favor and his favor and his favor and his favor and his power and his power on the inside of me. I need God's love first. Pastor Terry has been teaching us until we know everything God gives us. These are the three focuses that we should focus on. Here it is. If you were here last week, you got to get your notes. Faith, hope, and love. Pastor Terry said that we are judged 
on these three things more than anything. Our faith, (laughs) our hope, and our love. That these three things we need to focus on. And then he said, loving, (laughs) then he said, uh, loving people, say people. People who get on your nerve, people who talk about you, people who lie on you, people who take advantage of you, pe- people who you just can't stand, that coworker that trying to take your promotion, that job. It is, we have to love people past our problems. We, we have to love people past our problems. That, 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 yeah, I, I have a problem, but I don't know what problem you're facing, so I can't be insensitive to throw me on you. Let me throw me on you. Let me throw me on you because you might not know the God that I have. Because this, this, this peace and this joy that I have, the job didn't give it to me. And the job can't take it away. Uh, this joy and this peace that I have, uh, this, this job, didn't, the, the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. This, this joy and this peace I have, uh, uh, my wife didn't give it to me and my wife can't take it away. This joy and this peace I have, uh, nothing can separate me from the love of God. Dude, can I get two people in this room that will say, Pastor, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> nothing can separate you. From the love of God. Nothing. Say nothing. I don't, I, don't, I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you're dealing with. Nothing. Say nothing. Can separate you from the love of God. In your outline. We are walking. Here it is in, in our outline. We are walking in contagious love. Say contagious love. Are you... So infectious with your love that you are changing your environment when you arrive. We, we, our job and our mission here at Liberty, every time you walk through those doors, we want you to feel something that you have never felt out there before. That's why we hug you. That's why we greet you. That's why we're at the door. That's why we got signs saying you look good today. It's not so we can look cool. It's so that we can represent Christ in this earth so that you can feel something that you have never felt in a whole week. We want you to come to your spot of safety. That, that I know, I know I've been talked about all week. I've been dogged out all week. I know I've been going through situations all week long, but I know on Sunday I can come to the house of the Lord. I know on Wednesday I can come to the house of the Lord. I know I can, I can tune in. On, I know that there's a safe place for me, a place that I'm loved, a place that I'm valued, a place that I'm significant, a place where my name matters. We're looking for what I just said in every other place. We want everybody to give us everything, but we're not willing to do the one thing that requires everything, and that's loving one another. That if I, I, you, you know you can disagree and still be friends. You, you, you know you don't have to agree on everything. You, do, you, do you know you can have some differences and that's okay? Did you, did, do, do, you, do you know that, 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 that really, that, that we are all black, white, green, purple, yellow, blue, that we are all, once we become saved, once we become the righteousness of God, don't you know that our, 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 our history and our makeup and our, everything about us changes at that moment and we all have the same blood and that's the blood of Jesus Christ? go to a white church, black church, green church, blue church, it doesn't matter. Do you go to a church that preaches the word of God? Because we are all under the same blood. We should all walk in the unity of the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God. 
until we walk into a season of maturity where we'll be able to know, yes, we're different, but we're the same. Are you walking in contagious love? Your love should be so radiant. I was listening to a radio station this morning, actually, on the way to church. And the host was saying that she has a clock in her room. And she said the clock in her room is one of those clocks that light up and illuminate when it's her time to wake up. It gives her daylight inside even when it's dark outside. She said that she's noticed over time that she began, because she knew her, she knows herself. And she says, I began to build up walls of pillows and walls of blankets to stop the light from hitting me because I wasn't ready to wake up. Many times, oftentimes, as Christians, We set up walls and barriers in our life. Walls of hurt, walls of past pain, walls of fear, walls of insecurity, and we stop the light from being shined on our face. Not only that, we dim in our light by not understanding our value. Say value. Everyone in this room, everyone watching me around the world, you are a one of one. You are a masterpiece. You are God's anointed. God's hand is on you. God's ability is in you. God's love wants to radiate out of you. You're one of one. I'm a a gym shoe buff, and I know that there's some shoes that are one of ones, And there's some shoes that are mass produced. I'm so thankful that I'm not a mass produced product, that there's only one Julian in the earth, that there's just me and I'm by myself and I stand alone. That's the importance of God. That's the uniqueness of how he made each and every one of you. That, that's the importance of his face shining on us, that you understand your what? Value in God. At every place you walk in, your head should be up. Your head should not be down. Every place you walk in, your head should be up. Your head should never be down. Every job you're applying for, you walk in there like the job is already yours. Every house that you want, you walk into that house like it's got your name on it. Whatever you want, you begin to speak those things that be not as though they already are. Why do you do that? Because Christ in you says he loves you and you're his child and everything on earth belongs you if you have the faith to receive it (laughs) and guess what you don't get there by being mean and nasty (laughs) You, you, you don't get there by being mean and nasty no 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 you get there the doors open for you when you open your heart There's a open door policy in heaven. (laughs) He's waiting for you to show other people how good God has been to you. I remember telling that to someone, and they told me, they were like, well, Pastor, you know, nothing's really happening in my life. Nothing really worth talking about. You know, my kids are grown wife is here, but does she want to be? Got an okay job. I said, man, consider another's problem. I try to do this, and I'm not perfect at it. But when I want to complain, I consider others' problems first. 
when, 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 I, when I wanna when I wanna throw in the towel, I consider others first. Now, where does that come from? That, that doesn't come from meditation. That comes from a God type of love. Say a God type of love. So let's talk about the four different love groups here. And the first one is storge, which is a familiar love. Storge love is a type of love that is shared through familiarities, those around you or those that have a mutual bond with you. This is like friendship, most commonly referred to as a familial bond. The love that is shared within families and between parents and children. This is storge love. Then you have the philea love, which is friendship, platonic love. This is where the root word Philadelphia comes from, which is the city of what? Brotherly love. Uh, it's, no pun intended, they're playing in the, in the game tonight, and we're praying for them. Philea love is a type of love that's shared through friendship. Um, this type of love is um, the least natural. It's the least natural. It is not created to give uh, humanity anything or, um, it, or non-romantic. So, so what it is, it's not, it's not, it wasn't created. This is not a romantic type. This is more so uh, brotherly. This is platonic love. Then there's eros, which is romantic. This is where <clears throat> all the boyfriends and husbands and father's sons are probably at Walmart right now standing in line to get a card or something else uh, for their loved one. This, this is uh, the romantic type of love. This type of love is the closest uh, to the common English definition, uh, which is passionate. Eros, where we get the root word erotic. Eros is, is the act of being in love and loving another person. So, so we see these three. Now these three, thank you so much. Thank you. So we see these three, and then on D we see agape. Say agape. Now we're going to talk about this for, for just a few moments here. Agape is unconditional love. Agape love is unconditional So let's see. Uh, what? Thank you, Holy Spirit. So unconditional. So my daughter dropped my phone. Didn't break it, but she dropped it. Cracked it up. I got to get a new case. Pray for me. <laughs> she dropped my phone. She came to me. She hid the phone. That's what she does. She didn't come to me. She hid it. And I, I said, where's my phone? She's like, I dropped it. Okay, where is it? I don't want to show you. Why? Because I dropped it. Well, where is it? I don't know. I don't want to show you because I dropped it. Where's my phone? <laughs> she, she, she then shows me the phone. It's not even that bad, but she thought it was bad. Now, I don't know if this story is going to make sense I, because there's one point where I probably would have been really mad if it was cracked. But it wasn't, so it makes sense. So I love her unconditionally. Anyway, that makes sense? When, 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 when agape is, you don't have to do anything to get it from me. You don't have to wash my car. You don't have to, begin, you don't have to do anything for me to love you. It's unconditional. That's the God type of love. Unconditionally, God loves you. You are passionately loved by God. You are passionately loved by God. And he loves you, guess what? With an everlasting love that does not fail, that does not go away, that does not diminish. He loves you with an everlasting love. Agape. We see in Psalms 136 and 26, give thanks to the God of heaven for his steadfast love endures for the weekend. No, his love endures forever. It doesn't go away. You cannot earn it, and we do not deserve it. It cannot leave. He loves you so much. He doesn't care what you did last night. He doesn't care what you did last summer. He loves you anyway. 
And he's desperately wanting you to understand that. Agape love. We see in John 3 and 16, which is a famous passage of scripture, for God so loved the world he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Agape is freely given, no strings attached. No strings attached. Have you ever been anywhere and somebody's tried to sell you something and they tell you, hey, there's no strings attached? And you're like, yeah, dude, whatever. Where's the, I want to read something that says that. I just gave it to you. I just, I just gave it to you. I just gave it to you. For those who don't believe that, 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 that for God so loved the Lord, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And, and Psalms 30, uh, 136, uh, give thanks to the Lord uh, for his love is steadfast and it endures forever. That's the receipt. That's the receipt. That's all we need to know, that we're not alone, that God's love endures time after time after time after time. Even when I disappoint God, God will never disappoint me. Even when I quit on God, God will not quit on me. Even when I stop trusting, God will never stop trusting you because he loves you with an unconditional love and expects nothing in return. That's why, hallelujah, when you come into the presence of the Lord, when you get into a moment like this, when you get into a church in a secret space, even if that's in your car or in your bathroom, in the shower, wherever you are, in the sacred space of your life, when you give God glory, you, you tickle his fancy. When you give him praise, you, you excite him. When you open up your mouth and begin to worship him and say, God, you are good to me and I thank you. God, I love you. God, I'm so thankful. God, you're amazing. God, you're excellent. God, you are the man. If you say, God, you're the man, he'll still respond to you in a way that you'll receive a harvest for your life because you're giving him something that the angels cannot give him. You're giving him something that the angels in heaven can't wish they could give him. They're on payroll. Don't you know that? That the angels are on payroll? They got to go to church. They got to sing worship songs. They're on the payroll of heaven. But when you and I, as the believers and the followers of God, come to church and we lift up our hands and we shout to a, to a God that loves us and we say God I want you God I want your presence God I want your power God I want your spirit to live on the inside of me you shake heaven up and God says who is that praising me who is that giving me glory and on Google Maps he comes to Liberty Church and say, no, that's a church on fire for God. There's some people in that church that want something from the throne room of heaven. And guess what? Because they gave me worship, I'm going to give them what eyes have not seen. I'm going to give them what ears have not heard. I'm going to restore that marriage. I'm going to heal that business. I'm going to heal that body. I'm going to give them peace in their minds when they give me worship. And you cannot worship what you don't love. It is hot up here. <laughs> you cannot give yeah. worship to what you don't love. When I tell my wife she's beautiful, that's a level of worship. Now let me clear this up. You don't worship people. I'm using an example. Don't send us an email. I, I say she's beautiful. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's, I, I, I'm adoring what God gave me. <laughs> when, when I just say something, you, 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 and, and guess what? When, when I tell her that, the more I tell her that, uh, is there any kids in here? The more I tell her that. Agape, say agape. Agape love is the God type of love. Here we see that God's love is like an ocean. Ocean. Here in our outlines, ocean. You can see its beginning. 
but you can't see its ending. I was on a cruise one time, and I and I and me and my, me and my wife were just standing at the deck, and it was. She was like, "Oh my God, this is scary." I I'm like, "Yeah," but I I, I got all the way to the edge. I, I said, "Yeah, yeah." I, I, the vastness of God. Oh God, He's so big. We 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 can sometimes because we because we all have grown up in different homes and we've grown up with different ideas and beliefs and, and things of that nature. And so sometimes we can think God just lives in a church and He just lives in a little box. And, 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 but no, no, you have to understand the vastness of. He is that. His array is large. His catalog is is undeniable. He is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He he is the El Shaddai. He is the Alpha and Omega. He created the beginning and he already knows what your ending looks like. He is God. And understanding his vastness, I said, wow, the, the fear. Not one of a gun, but the one of the sun, the S-U-N. You have a God reverence for his nature and his character. Understanding that out of all those other things, he loves us most. Why? Because him, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit uh, were, were all together, and they were having a group meeting, and they said, let us create man. Hmm. In our image and in our likeness. Let us create man. We're three part being. Let us create man. In our image and in our likeness. So, so I don't know about you, but you're looking at a one of one. You are a one of one. You are a masterpiece. I want to get that in your spirit. Say, I'm a masterpiece. Yeah, say it one more time. I'm a masterpiece. As we go, the purpose of love in our outlines, the purpose of love. As we go up, God's love is like an ocean. Pastor Rick Warren has that in his book, Purpose Driven Life. Take the limits off of your view of his love for you. The purpose of love, we are created from love. Love needs an object, so God created us. So he could have an object to love. God created us so he could have something to love. He cre- God created us so, we, so he could have something to love. There's a story, there was a, there was a, a boy and his father who was in the backyard playing. And they were in the backyard. It was a beautiful sunny day. They were in the backyard. And a plane was above. And the son said, Dad, look how small that plane is. The dad smiled and, and said, no, son, it, it's much bigger than that. The dad thought nothing else of it. They were going on family vacation a few weeks later. And they were in the airport. And the son was shocked and amazed at how big the airplanes were. He said, oh, my God, Dad, look, look, look how big these planes are. The dad said, yes, yeah, son, I told you. They're bigger than you think. Can I suggest to us this morning that your proximity to God determines your view of him. If you're far away from him, you think he's small. But when you're close to him, you understand the cavities and the vastness of who he is. You understand that he's not only big, but he's super big. That that he's big enough for you and your whole family. That he's big enough for you and your whole family. That that he's not that he can carry you from destination to destination. That God is bigger than what you think. Your proximity determines your view of God. Your proximity determines how you believe God loves you. How he all the way? How, how, yeah, you look. I see you up there, little man. No, no, no. No, he's big. Say he's big. 
the purpose of love, that God created us to love us. Thank you, Jesus. In Deuteronomy 7, excuse, excuse me, in Deuteronomy 7 and 9, now therefore, that the Lord your God is good. Therefore, that the Lord God is God. He is faithful, keeping his covenant of love to the thousand generations of those who love him and keep his commandments. God is faithful. Say he's faithful. faithful. Say he's faithful. faithful. The next one in B, we are created to love. In 1 John 4 and 9, we love because he first loved us. You cannot be a believer or a follower of Jesus if you do not believe this. We love. Why do we love? Because he first loved us. The object, our object of love, we are to love God, number one, and we're to love people, number two. Say, number one, love God. God. Say, number two, love people. And see here, we are created to give love. In Ephesians 4 and 32, be kind. And compassionate to one another. Forgive each other just as Christ, our Lord and Savior, forgave us. Choose love first. The greatest of these is love. As we go, As we go, there might be someone in the room. There might be someone watching me online. She's saying, Pastor, I'm I'm far away from him, but I want to be closer. I want to, I want to, I want my airport experience. I want to see him as he is. Today is your moment. Today is your chance. I don't care if you say this prayer every single week. Don't you know that, that his, his faith is renewed day by day? That I need to keep repeating this. I need, this needs to be the song track of my heart. This needs to be the echo of my spirit. That God, I want to love beyond my pain. That I want to be used by you. So we're going to pray this prayer. And because we're family here, let's all say it together. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I make you my Lord. I make you my Savior. From this day forward, I'll choose love first. I am made new. Today is my day of victory, of joy peace in God's grace. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you believe that, give God a praise. As we dismiss, I just want to encourage you to love first. I'm telling you, this is going to be a week of transformation in your life. I believe it, that this place, that this space is called to you, that this is the place of victory, that this is the place of healing. Let us stand on our feet. I'm going to give us the blessing as we go. If you would, lift your right hand of faith to heaven. God, I ask that you cover these precious people. Cover them as they drive. Cover them as they go to work. Cover them as they're with their family and their loved ones. God, I pray protection over them until we meet again.
have your way in their lives. Let this week be a week of victory. Let this week be a week of joy. Let this week be a week of your presence in their life. Now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us. May the Lord be gracious unto us. May the Lord lift his countenance upon us. And may the Lord give us his peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are dismissed in Jesus' name. I love you so much. We'll see you next Sunday. God bless you.